Then an old man, a keeper of an inn, said, Speak to us of eating and drinking. And he said, Would that you could live on the fragrance of the earth, and like an air plant be sustained by the light. But since you must kill to eat, and rob the newly born of its mother's milk to quench your thirst, then let it be an act of worship. And let your board stand as an altar on which the pure and the innocent of forest and plain are sacrificed for that which is purer and still more innocent in man. When you kill a beast, say to him in your heart, By the same power that slays you, I too am slain, and I too shall be consumed. For the law that delivered you into my hand shall deliver me into a mightier hand. Your blood and my blood is naught but the sap that feeds the tree of heaven. And when you crush an apple with your teeth, say to it in your heart, Your seed shall live in my body, and the buds of your tomorrow shall blossom in my heart, and your fragrance shall be my breath, and together we shall rejoice through all the seasons. And in the autumn, when you gather the grapes of your vineyards for the winepress, say in your heart, I too am a vineyard, and my fruit shall be gathered for the winepress, and like new wine I shall be kept in eternal vessels. And in winter, when you draw the wine, let there be in your heart a song for each cup, and let there be in the song a remembrance for the autumn days, and for the vineyard, and for the winepress. Then a plowman said, Speak to us of work. And he answered, saying, You work that you may keep pace with the earth and the soul of the earth. For to be idle is to become a stranger unto the seasons, and to step out of life's procession that marches in majesty and proud submission towards the infinite. When you work, you are a flute through whose heart the whispering of the hours turns to music. Which of you would be a reed, dumb and silent, when all else sings together in unison? Always you have been told that work is a curse and labor a misfortune. But I say to you that when you work, you fulfill a part of Earth's furthest dream, assigned to you when that dream was born. And in keeping yourself with labor, you are in truth loving life. And to love life through labor is to be intimate with life's inmost secret. But if you in your pain call birth an affliction, and the support of the flesh a curse written upon your brow, then I answer that naught but the sweat of your brow shall wash away that which is written. You have been told also that life is darkness, and in your weariness you echo what was said by the weary. And I say that life is indeed darkness, save when there is urge. And all urge is blind, save when there is knowledge. And all knowledge is vain, save when there is work. And all work is empty, save when there is love. And when you work with love, you bind yourself to yourself, and to one another, and to God. And what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It is to build a house with affection, even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. It is to sow seeds with tenderness, and reap the harvest with joy, even as if your beloved were to eat the fruit. It is to charge all things you fashion with a breath of your own spirit, and to know that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching. 
often I have heard you say, as if speaking in sleep, He who works in marble and finds the shape of his own soul in the stone is nobler than he who plows the soil. And he who seizes the rainbow to lay it on a cloth in the likeness of man is more than he who makes the sandals for our feet. But I say, not in sleep, but in the overwakefulness of noontide, that the wind speaks not more sweetly to the giant oaks than to the least of all the blades of grass. And he alone is great who turns the voice of the wind into a song made sweeter by his own loving. Work is love made visible. And if you cannot work with love but only with distaste, it is better that you should leave your work and sit at the gate of the temple and take alms of those who work with joy. For if you bake bread with indifference, you bake a bitter bread that feeds but half man's hunger. And if you grudge the crushing of the grapes, your grudge distills a poison in the wine. And if you sing though as angels, and love not the singing, you muffle man's ears to the voices of the day and the voices of the night. <laughs>